My guest today is Beiji Jang. Beiji, how are you? Good. How are you doing, David? I'm doing really well. What do you do? Uh, I'm a software developer. Me too. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, you were telling me earlier that um, you and your last job did a lot of technical interviews right. for other software developers, right? Exactly. Yep. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a software engineer at uh, Amazon before, and then in my job, uh, part of it is hiring, uh, hire and develop the best. Um, well, I have conducted a couple dozen in, uh, technical interviews, uh, technical coding interviews. For okay. This is just to determine somebody wants to work at your company, and you want to determine if they are uh, they're good enough if they're if they have the technical chops exactly to survive at a tech company. They like know Amazon. what they're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's the um, just kind of describe the the process? Is there a cookie cutter process for everyone, or do you adapt it along the way, or what? We usually adapt it on the way. Um, usually, there's a general format of um, you know little introduction, and then we follow by like a technical question. If they do really well, we we'll give them a second one, um, and then follow by like a couple minutes of Q and A's. Um, if some people somebody is doing you know not so not so well, we kind of change it up a little bit, do a little Q and A early. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, generally one to two technical interview qu questions. Right, so those technical questions are they already pre-scripted? For the same ones for everyone? Mm, not exactly. So the interviewer has a little flexibility on the questions that they choose. Um, mm -hmm. They have some competencies they try to evaluate. Um, so, and then we get to switch up the questions a little bit, um, just so depending on the candidate's skill set. So you've got a pool of questions from which to choose. You How do you determine which questions you're going to ask? Uh, I look at the competency I was assigned to evaluate, and mm -hmm. then to look at what what people. Uh, have shown the, on their resumes. Uh, if something reflects really well with them, I generally pick that question. Okay, so if the job requires a certain skill set, then those are the competencies yeah. you want to look at. And if their resume, if they're bragging about a particular skill set, if they've included on their resume, then you'll dive into that. That's what you're going to do. Ex exactly. Give, give, give me an example of a, a question. Uh, uh, sure, not, sure, I'm, sure. I may or may not answer it. But. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> very simple one, you know, let's say uh, reverse a uh, li linked list. Okay. Uh, you know, linked list is a data structure where you have a bunch of nodes uh, followed by the next node, uh, and then you know we just ask them to reverse it. Yeah. Um, so let's imagine you have like a node one, two, three. At the mm -hmm. end, we expect the linked list to say three, two, one. Right. Yeah. Uh, the answer is list dot reverse. <laughs> you, can, you can do it that way. Probably won't get you very far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, in .NET, yeah. that does work, yeah. but I know you're looking for something <laughs> different. Uh, well, um, so now, so that example right there, that's a coding example. Are you asking them to verbally describe how to hmm. do that, or are you going to give them uh, some IDE where they're going to actually type code and compile it and run it? What's, yep. what's that? That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, so usually uh, we like to ask the candidate their thoughts, uh, their general approaches before they jump straight into coding. Okay. But at the end, we do expect to see some code on okay. some kind of IDE. It doesn't really even need to be an IDE. It can be like a notepad. Um, we don't. They generally do not run the code. Um, they simply just kind of type out the code as if they were coding it for production. Okay. Um, I've seen these, these those types of interview questions before and. One of the uh, one of the criticisms of it is that some people are good coders, but not when they're being put under that kind of pressure. Is that uh, first? Is that a fair statement? Have you encountered people like that? And then how do you respond then uh, to yep. those kind of folks? How, how do you make sure you don't eliminate somebody who's a really good coder but not really great at that sort of thing? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, coding interviews and the actual what you do on the day-to-day -day job as a software developer, they're you know a little bit different. There, you know, some people can really study up on the coding interviews. Um, they might not be a good developer, but they can uh, appear really, really good, right? Um, so what we do is typically we ask more questions after they write their code. Um, you can typically tell if someone knows where they're actually typing. Um, by asking lots of uh, detailed drill down questions. Um, like, hey, why did you choose that variable? Why did you choose to go with that coding approach? Um, you know, a candidate who's just been practicing questions after questions, they typically don't know what to answer. And that's how you can kind of tell they're not, they haven't developed that much. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, on the other hand, you know, somebody who might be struggling on coding interview because maybe they don't know the solution to that problem, but then you can kind of help them by giving them hints. Um, usually, a generally a good developer should um, get to the answer with uh, some hints. Yeah, I've I've had. Um I didn't used to think this way, but I, I didn't realize when I, when I first started interviewing years ago that it's okay for the person being interviewed to actually ask questions. To say, I, this problem right here, I would solve it a different way. Can you tell me, uh, you know, am, I, am I allowed to, for example, am I allowed to use the reverse function, for example? And you would say, no, no, you have to do this manually. But, but just clarifying the question. I used to think I had to understand it myself. <laughs> Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, sometimes we purposely make the question very vague or, yeah. or very, you know, generalized. The, the goal is for the candidate to ask to kind of, um, you know, unveil the question a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that's yeah. the, so that's that's step one is do that. What 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 are you going from there? Now you've got uh, some idea of their coding prowess and their thought process. What's next? Yeah. Right, right, right. They move along. Let's say they write that reverse function, you know, hopefully now with dot reverse. And then, <laughs> you know, and then at this point, you know, should be we tend to have a pretty good idea of where the candidate stands as far as coding skills are. Okay. And then we can either go one of the two routes. Either we can ask them like a follow up question where we make the reverse linked list a little bit more complicated, okay. where we can say, hey, reverse the linked list again, but I only want to reverse the even notes or the odd notes, mm -hmm. things like that. Or we can go another approach where we're like, okay, I have evaluated enough of the reversing uh, algorithm coding. Let's go with a different question, completely different question. So, okay. um, are, are there parts of the interview that aren't coding related? Tell me about that. Sure, sure. Uh, some of the other types of interview I've conducted are called systems and design questions. Mm -hmm. um, those are more on a high level uh, design interview, right? You're given a a big problem statement and then your goal is to come up with a distributed or hopefully distributed by the end um, system design that's uh, scalable high highly available and all that good stuff um, mm -hmm. these are not coding tend to be coding heavy they're more I would say talking heavy or mm -hmm. you know whenever allowed maybe drawing heavy um, so so those are less coding but more we evaluate more on what the candidates say and what kind of questions they tend to ask the interviewer okay uh, and then you're done with the interview? Is that, or is there more beyond that? Uh, no, there'll be more on that. Uh, <laughs> What's, what would what, what happen yeah. next? Yeah, um, you know, usually when candidate goes through everything, uh, we typically save a couple minutes, uh, you know, for them to ask us questions. You know, we interview goes both ways. You know, we are evaluating the candidate. The candidate obviously wants to find out more about the role, the company they're interviewing for. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they typically, you know, we, we give them a couple minutes to talk what about. What are some good questions yeah. that a candidate mm -hmm. could ask? Maybe, um, what is your day-to-day -day like? Um, you know, what do you like or what do you not like about your job? Um, you know, yeah, those are really good questions. Um, but I would say definitely do not ask what was the answer to the last question, to the last coding question, technical question. That's it just, a bad question? That, that's a pretty bad question. Really? It, um, yeah, it, it, it makes the whole thing awkward. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, we're not allowed to tell you legally, you know, like, let's say if I tell really? you that's the answer and then we say we choose not to go forward and then, you know, then, then legally, you, you know, you get, get into some kind of trouble. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't even consider that part of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell me, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are uh, actively looking for a job that are interviewing. What's a good way for them to prepare for a technical interview? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, all of these questions are more or less online. Um, obviously, the interviewer can switch up the, the, you know, the details a little bit, but the general data structure and algorithm are they're all over the internet for you to practice a really good website it's got like leetcode.com l-e-e-t-c-o-d-e.com okay. um, where you can see a pool of questions um, it, you know and then you can just practice practice them um, mm -hmm. I also recommend mock interviews um, and earlier David said that uh, you might get the candidate might be stressed out might be sure. uh, you know highly highly pressured right so um, a good way to get over that is by doing some mock interview you know have a call with your your friends over the phone you know talk with your with your dog or something practice explaining the code um, mm -hmm. a good coder doesn't necessarily mean you would come off as a good coder to me to me um, you know uh, you know you might have wrote the perfect code but if you can't explain it um, that won't really be a good interview result necessarily so mm -hmm. definitely do lots of practice uh, whether with code or with talking to people yeah I think I, I, I agree the both the things you described writing of code 
and uh, articulating your ideas, whether it's about the code or about your job or about yourself. Those are muscles, muscles that need to be exercised. Absolutely. And if you haven't done that, like I have been a long time since I've interviewed <laughs> for a job, mm-hmm. uh, then it's hard. It's hard to just jump right back into it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, keep up with the practice. You know, you don't get those skills overnight. Um, some people are like, oh, I, I want to, you know, rock these interviews in just like two weeks. Th- those are not, you, you see those things online, like I would teach you in just like a week, a day. Those, those are not necessarily real. You know, it, mm-hmm. it is a muscle, it takes time and energy to develop. We've talked mostly about the, the technical skills that you're testing for, but there are other skills that are important as well. What's, are you, are you, in the interviews you've conducted, are you checking for things like, oh, cultural fit or uh, anything like that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, during the introduction uh, phase of round of the interview, typically like f- 10 to 15 minutes, uh, we tend to ask some cultural fit questions. You know, if uh, things like should a conflict arise, what do you do? Should a deadline come? You know, and maybe we can't meet it. What do you do, right? We tend to see if the candidate would react well when the pressure comes, you know, when, when you're actually working. Um, and then we, we tend to evaluate that from there. Yeah. What kinds of things are you looking for in those questions? Does that align with the company value? Um, yeah. Are they able to give up, uh, give me a concrete example? Or are they simply just throwing in an example out of air? Um, some people have really vague example. And then you dig further, you just know that they're just making it up. Uh, <laughs> so not good. I, I sometimes wonder yeah. if it's okay to make it up as long as you can do so convincingly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, especially earlier in your career yeah. where you don't have examples right, 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 of right, right. everything that's happened. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I think so. I, th- I have heard questions, you know, how do you ha- handle conflict? And my response is generally, you know, there's lots of right answers mm-hmm. in any organization. And uh, just because you and I disagree, we could both be right. right. And even if... I feel like I'm more right than you. Is it is it worth the time and effort for me to battle for this, or should I save that energy for something that's really, really is important to me? The expression is, "Is this a hill I want to die on?" It's <laughs> right. kind of a violent <laughs> metaphor, but that's kind of where it comes from. <laughs> Uh, but maybe uh, maybe other organizations aren't like maybe other organizations. They really want you to be passionate and fight for everything. Um, I'm not sure I want to join those organizations. It's probably best right. <laughs> best to, uh, to know that early. Um, is there anything we haven't yeah. talked about that we should have? Uh, just uh, yeah, no. We talked about before the interview, the preparation. We talked about during the interview, you know, mm-hmm. and how you should prepare. Um, you, you know, you know, maybe a little bit about after the interview. Oh yes, right? what, what's, right? what's a good yeah. thing, uh, yeah. particularly. F- uh, let's let's focus on the yeah. interviewer, the person that's applying for sure, the job. Sure. What should that person do after the interview? Uh, so typically after this phase, um, your feedback is getting put into a packet, you know, for, for the hiring, your manager, your future manager to evaluate. You know, for you as a candidate, you know, there really is no rush, but it wouldn't hurt to send something like a thank you letter. Mm-hmm. You know, your interviewers, your hiring manager, the HR folks, they putting all the time and the energy, you know, to come up up with all the questions and you know all the stuff to write about you you know and you know the least you can do is maybe you know send something like a thank you and yeah. and there's no rush yeah excellent before we go um I know you have a youtube channel oh tell yeah, us about yeah. that yes i do uh my channel is called better logic uh i do more of a computer science uh slash like vlog style channel yeah. uh where i talk about a little bit of that uh feel free to check it out in the description below I will. I'll put a link to it here, which is going to put the pressure on you to add more content to that. I will. I will. It's a new channel. All right, Beji. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, David. Pleasure talking to you. Use your technology to make more friends.